Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into another edition of Slow Your Roll. It is different today, Jesse. We are in the downtown studio. With nicer mics. With nicer, nicer mics. I mean, you know, these mics that move all over the place and stuff. It's, it's yeah. nice. I've been looking forward to this, and uh, the setup's great. Thanks to BevCam for, for putting this all together. Thanks for everybody you contributed to having the new studio. And we're ready, though. We're ready for some football talk. We're going to talk with baseball, the offseason. The winter meetings are going to be, what are they? Are they usually middle of September, uh, December? Yeah. Yeah. Right before they do Christmas. It right, right before Christmas? Like, well, like, do they end like the week of half the time? Pretty much around that. That's wild. That's wild. Oh, I, I thought it was more middle of, but I guess they, go, they do go right, right, right up against that holiday season. Anyway, though, we'll have some baseball talk in the beginning, and then it'll be all football here. The Pats beat the Bears, who are supposed to be way better than them. We'll talk about that. Caleb Williams, you know the players went to the coaches and one wanted Shane Waldron fired and asked them to bench Caleb Williams. So they got a massive problem on their hands. Wow. That is... Maybe they saw the Patriots having sitting Drake May and how well that worked out for him. Like, yeah, maybe there is something to sitting I think it, quarterbacks I think, it, I, think, I think it has more to do with, with Caleb as, I think, personality-wise coming out of being college. A, being a college kid? Yeah. I mean, you know, he wanted ownership of the franchise. Yeah. The painting the nails, F U Utah. Like that's just, you know. Ah, we'll we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, we actually have a preview tonight's game, the Thursday night game. Big game, big game. Um, I think it's a much bigger game for the Eagles than it is Washington. I'll explain why. Uh, but with that, Jesse, I will turn it over to you to get us started with the Sox off season. Yes. The interest kings. Some baseball. <laughs> so hmm. If anyone has listened to this time and time again, I, I talk a lot about how I just am so fed up with the Red Sox ownership. They annoy me. Anytime any of this stuff comes out, I'm like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Call me when it happens. Mm -hmm. And now that it's the off season again, we're going to do this song and dance again. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to care. I mean, I'll care enough. I'm listening. I'm going to talk about it. But I'm not going to put any stock into it mm -hmm. until any actual move gets made. And what am I talking about? Well, if you're in the know with baseball, all the rumors are swirling once again that, oh, the Red Sox, they are apparently interested in everybody. Just like, just like the last couple of years. They're interested in everybody. Are they going to actually go after these guys? I don't know. Probably not. At least not that strong. And then they'll come back after they sign with someone else. And like, yo, we tried. We offered all the way up to the, up to like $300 million or whatever they said for Yamamoto last year mm -hmm. that he turned down. Um, but it's, it's until I see something different, I'm just going to assume it's more the same. It's more John Henry, just talking, 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 trying to get the fans like, no, come on, like buy those tickets, come to opening day. It'll be great. Like just buy the tickets and then we'll get, give you what you want. Trust me. It'll happen. Mm. And I just don't care anymore. I will say that this one, the difference is it's coming from Jeff Passan. He's the guy He's the baseball guru. He knows all the things. When it comes from his mouth, it's legit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these reporters, they have reputations to keep. They'd like to be right for their ego's sake at the very least mm -hmm. uh, and for their job. Like, you know, they, they want to be the guy. They want to be trustworthy. And when they come out and say things like this, they put their reputation on the line a little bit. Not with the Red Sox. Mm. You can just say these things with the Red Sox and people be like, oh, you know what? Maybe. Maybe Jeff's right this time. Mm -hmm. But if Jeff's wrong... And come April, and none of it was true, like mate, like I believe, no one's going to care. No one's going to be like, you were wrong, Jeff. It's mm -hmm. like, no, Jeff took a chance, and he was wrong. But on the off chance, Jeff is right. Well, Jeff looks like a genius. Mm -hmm. Jeff called it. He knew it was right all along, and he looks good. Nothing it will not ruin his reputation. It will only help his reputation. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about Juan Soto, Crochet. Corbin Burns. I didn't hear that, that they were interested in Soto. You didn't hear Soto? No, I didn't. I heard the Rays checked in on Soto. That's literally the, all the talk. Oh, Soto's wow. literally all the talk. Are <laughs> no, you serious? I didn't hear the Sox I were didn't that hear interested. Soto. He's their guy. Oh, He's their okay. number one play, according to Jeff. According to Jeffrey. You know, they're apparently going to go hard after him. He's, he's, he's their second meeting, or Juan Soto's second meeting. He's meeting with the Toronto, maybe it was yesterday. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And then either way, the second meeting is supposed to be with the Red Sox. 
uh, Yankees are going to meet, meet with them. There was a fourth team. I don't remember the fourth team. Hmm. Basically, the entire AL East is meeting with them, though. Um, but I don't, again, I don't care about the meetings. They met with Yamamoto. They talked to Otani. They've talked to all these guys for years at this point. I don't care if you're talking. Be the guy, be in the talking where you are become at least not the first team. First, to bow out. <laughs> yeah, like the first couple teams, they're like, all right, we know it's not them. Mm-hmm. All right, we talked to them. It's out of their price range. We know they're out. At least get to that second level of talks. You know what I'm saying? Then I'll be like, all right, things have changed. Mm-hmm. You're willing to talk a second time. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're going to sign anybody, but you're, oh, that, that'll, that'll be changed to me. Okay. And also, like, oh, this Red Sox franchise is no one wants to play for them anymore. Mm-hmm. So you will have to reach deeper into your pocket mm-hmm. to get Juan Soto, to get Crochet. I mean, he's a trading asset, but, like, you know, Burns would be very expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, this talks of like, oh, they're, they're willing to trade a lot of these guys. Bello apparently is being shopped, Giolito, mm-hmm. to get these bigger names, allegedly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when a couple of years ago, year and a half, whatever it was, mm-hmm. when we got Breslow, yeah. he was what? The 10th guy they talked to? Yeah, something like that. And he was a guy whose last only executive job in baseball was... In the Cubs, mm-hmm. you know, like the third guy behind the baseball operations gig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, he was the guy that, like, okay, thanks. Like, thanks for taking the job. Yes. Like, you, we, it's not offered to you. You're the one, like, we got stuck with. Yeah. So not only is our franchise being made fun of by everyone in the business, players, executives, agents, being like, wow, look how cheap they are. You now have a GM who doesn't really know what he's doing. I don't feel like he knows what he's doing. I've never seen anything that shows he knows what he's doing. And you're telling me we're going to get Juan Soto. Mm. What are you smoking, Jeff? (laughs) Yeah, we're going to get Garrett Crochet. Mm. We're going to get Corbin Burns. Well, you know why he was the 10th option and they had to go to the 10th option to get the job, right? Well, everyone turned it down. Well, why did they turn it down? Because no one wants to work for this team. Exactly, because you have John Henry over your shoulder. Yes. The entire time, or oh, that's too much money. Yeah, it's too, ex- it's too expensive. And have you watched? Um, have you watched the comeback yet on Netflix? No, 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 you I should. Don't, I don't. I I would love to. Uh, you know what? It's str- on the flicks. Oh yeah, that's right. You don't have Netflix. I don't have the flicks right. Anyway, now. you know what struck me though? What? Any story that Terry or Theo talked about? You know, like that team during the regular season, they kind of were middling. Yeah, like, they were not as good as they should have been. Five hundred team. Anytime, Terry, or. Theo was telling the story about how ownership would get on their ass and like personal conversations, like this is unacceptable, blah, 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 blah. It was always Lakino. No one ever said it was John Henry. So you know that makes sense to me. It seems as the longer Lakino has been gone, the more from John Henry's well, perspective, it's actually always in, been all about it's an asset and it's a business, not that, about winning. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, John Henry's never been a loud guy. If you even just hear him speak, he's very quiet. He's very uh, introverted. Mm -hmm. The only time John Henry talked to the comeback thing the most about was talking about how much he loved Billy Bean, which Uh, goes back to our thing about it's always it's always been about money for John Henry. And I mean, before in the past, like Larry Lucchino was kind of the face, the loud guy, the 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 spokesman Mm -hmm. of the front office for the team, which is fine. You know, you don't need everyone to speak out. And, like, John, I guess John Henry's a monotone guy, kind of a quiet guy. I didn't need him to speak out about everything. Larry Lucchino was much more of wear his heart on his sleeve. You know, he's the one that came up with the evil empire about the Yankees. He would always talk about how he hates the Yankees. Like, he didn't – a lot of these owners, are like, they're very nice about it. Mm-hmm. Larry Lucchino was not. Mm-hmm. I hate that team. I want everything they have, and I'm going to go to the ends of the earth to get it. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that Larry Lucchino was always – a driver of let's take it to the next level. Let's go after that big name guy. And John Henry's a lot more like, I need to save some money. Let's try to sell tickets. What's the spreadsheet say about where we can get the best value? And like, (laughs) I think Larry at times, and even Theo would get the team in trouble a little bit with being too aggressive. Mm -hmm. We'd get the Pablo Sandoval's and the Henry Ramirez contracts, but you know what? That's effort. Mm -hmm. That's trying. That was dipping into the free agency and like, you know what? Last year was really disappointing. Let's get some names to try to amp up this. 
take it to another level. The mm-hmm. offense was nothing last year. Let's bring in home run hitters like Sandoval and Hanley Ramirez. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out, but the effort was there mm-hmm. to get in there, to get big contracts done, to talk to big name guys and not take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. That's, I haven't seen that at all these last few years. And uh, I don't think like, Craig Breslow <laughs> is going to be the guy. Yeah, they brought in Theo. He's now one of the, the 30 owners, something it was. He's an owner now, though. He's in a different space. Yeah. And I, I said it was nothing but a publicity stunt. Oh, yeah. Come I, on, Theo. <clears throat> I Come think on. so, too. Be- Red Sox fans will love that you're with us. Yeah. We're not going to give you any say or any power, though. No. No. Or at least not enough to make a difference. But, yeah, I... I, I a hundred percent agree. Um, you know, I'm not even trying to blame Breslow at all. Maybe Breslow no, I'm is not capable. Him. Um, but it, it, until John Henry shows me that he wants to actually pony up the kind of cash that he should be able to spend, because the Red Sox make more money than almost everybody, uh, I, I don't believe that this off season will be any different no. than anything else. I think there'll be a, a lot more true value shopping. Well, there's that that other Japanese pitcher now that everyone's talking about. Yes. They apparently are really interested in him. Mm -hmm. But again, there's talks of like he's not very interested in going to Boston because, you know, he's I guarantee he's talked to Otani and Yamamoto. And I don't know what exactly they would would tell him, but I'm sure it's something along the lines of the negotiations left a bad taste in my mouth. Yes. Or they were just laughable. Yeah, because <laughs> they were yeah, nowhere, the, the Xander they were nowhere Bogarts, close. A Xander Bogarts offer, a slap in the face. Yeah. Don't bother. Don't exactly. waste your time. Exactly. All right, from the Sox, I want to talk about two of the bigger names. Um, not biggest, obviously, because Soto is the biggest name. But I want to talk Alex Bregman and Crochet. Garrett, obviously, um, a trade piece. I believe Bregman is a complete free agent. And they're going to demand heavy price tags of a different sort. Again, one's going to be players and prospects the other is going to be money but I think there are two guys that I look at right now and I'm wondering is the price that they're demanding worth it I mean crochet has one great year he's had one great year he also kind of fell off a bit at the end now I know you could say you know it's the White Sox he didn't get traded how much do you care da 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 he still fell off and it was only one year And it was a lot more innings on that arm than he's ever thrown before. So I I thought the White Sox were going to shut him down way earlier than they ended up doing. That that I always thought that was bizarre that they didn't. And then there's Bregman, who, by the way, I will say, got really hot at the end of the year. So he did end the year with 26 homers. I bet 30 doubles, 75 knocked in. He batted 260 and only a 315 on base. He has stayed a very good upper echelon major league hitter but i do feel like there has been not a steep it's been extremely gradual but i feel like there has been a sort of gradual decline he is now age 30. i don't know i i I feel like these are two guys where i'd like to look elsewhere especially the phillies because you have alec bohm and yet he's the one that bregman's getting linked to the most i what are your thoughts on those two i feel like the phillies just Dave Dombrowski calls everybody. No, I know. So that's that might be part of it. And, you know, I mean, Alec Bohm can play first base also, right? Yes, he can. Maybe they want him to play first base. Yeah, maybe. And then Alex will play third. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, if Alex is... Because, yeah, I mean, he did have a good kind of comeback at the end of last season, but I, I've, I felt for a little while that, like, oh, he's... You're right. It's not been fast, but it's been obvious and steady Mm -hmm. these past few years. I would hope that he at least somewhat notices this and he's not going to be like uh, Craig Kimball a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm hold out. I know my worth. And then he had signs with the team and is crap. Mm -hmm. I mean, third basemen are, you you need a lot out of them. Mm -hmm. And if you are not a, a, you know, a Raffy Devers kind of guy, who can put up these numbers, you know, you're, I, I, you can't be asking for a lot of money. But, you know, he's multiple <laughs> World Series guy. He's put up MVP numbers in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, is his, is his agent who I think it is? Scott Boris? Uh, like everybody else? Because I'm sure he's going to ask for an arm and a leg at that point. 
But he's a, he's a commodity. He's a known name. He's gonna he's gonna have a price tag. Yeah, it's Boris. Of course it is. I know it's always Boris. Um, yeah, like multi world series champion. At one point was a looked at as oh maybe this guy could win an MVP in MVP conversations. Mm-hmm. I, I mean he's gonna be expensive just on name alone. Yeah. Yeah, you're 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 buying Alex Bregman. You're the person. The not, not, base, not necessarily what he is today. The on-base percentage is the thing that it's really weird. I mean, he went from 366 on base in 2022, 363 in 2023, plummeted all the way to 315 last year. That's a massive decline. Yeah. And very odd. The average well, he started the off average very of, bad. The average of the last three years have at least been steady. Now, his batting average has been dropping steadily for a while. Mm-hmm. He's been in the 259 to 260 range the last three years. 2022 at 259, 262 in 2023, and obviously, as I said, 260 last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was like a 280, 290 hitter early on in his career. The MVP year, yeah. I think he hit 296. So 30 home run guy. He hit 41 that year. Oh, did he? Yes. Oh, so, all right, definitely 30 he is, home run potential he has guy. Never, he has <laughs> never hit 30 again, though. Okay. I mean, he, he you hit, know, he's usually a 20, he 25 hit 20, home He run. hit 23 two years ago, 25 the year before, and 26 last okay. year. So... I don't, it's just, I don't know. I, I think I'd look elsewhere. I mean, if you're now the, at age 30, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't like him for the Phillies, to be honest. Yeah. I think a decent spot actually would be the Yankees. Mm. That's not a bad place for him. Because if they spell, if they don't sign Soto, yeah. Oh, I mean, they don't have a third baseman. The only issue with that is, man, if he doesn't hit the ground running, that, that's, that's going to get weird. Because they don't like him in New York. Oh, because of Astros. Yeah. I guess. It's, a, it's just, yeah. You got to move on. <laughs> I know. I know. Winning here is I mean, all. I would hope. But if, but if the guy starts off bad, yeah. like, you know, it's, it, it could just get weird. I mean, Bregman's not. He's played for the Astros a couple of years. has been nothing but in the ALCS almost his entire career. Actually, I think this year was the first year his entire career he did not make the ALCS. I think so, too. So New York won't bother him. Mm-hmm. At least the media, obviously, if he, again, does not have a hot start and they just rag on him, rag on him, rag on him, including in the locker room. Yeah, he'd probably just be like, you know what? I don't want to be here. I'm yeah. not going to try. Mm-hmm. Trade me. But I, he's not someone that I think is going to get shook mm-hmm. when he steps on the Yankee Stadium field for the first time, assuming he signs there. Yeah. And be like, oh, my God, this isn't – I wasn't quite ready for this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, a thirty-year-old guy. It's all. I mean, the the stadium is small. I, he's not a lefty, but it's still a small stadium. I feel like he will benefit. His power numbers will benefit, assuming he's not shook and get the bat on the ball. Yeah, like it's not like the batting average could go up because now he'd be more willing to use the entire field because he knows he can hit the ball out to the opposite yeah. field to Yankee Stadium. Like Yankees aren't young, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I'm not. Phillies aren't necessarily either, but I feel like they want to be young. They certainly have a younger personality. Mm-hmm. I feel like he will fit Astros aside and that history aside. Who he Bregman is and the type of player he is fits in what the Yankees are doing more than what the Phillies are doing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily in the benefit of the Yankees. Mm. I gotcha. Um, moving on to Crochet. Uh, what are your opinions on that? Now, he's left-handed. Prima Donna. There's the sales stuff. I, I was going to mention that. Uh, where he didn't want to get traded because he was like, I won't risk my arm. I've never started before. And then Chicago proceeds to still start him most of the way through the rest of the year. Now, I know they limited the innings. They started throwing him only three or four. But, like, still, I I expected a shutdown then at some point. Um, Yeah, this is one, at least with Bregman, it's only money. With Crochet, you got to give up prospects and players. Uh, This is one that I'd be steering clear of. Completely. I kind of would too, especially with the attitude stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I get it. We live in a day and age where, I mean, I feel like almost any pitcher you take on, especially at this point, has risk Mm -hmm. because at some point he might hurt his elbow. Tommy John, you never know. Shoulders and elbows are, you know, we, we talked about this. They're dropping like flies. Yes. So I feel like any pitcher at this point is a risk to take on. And when they are, I guess, you know, f- through his first amount of time throwing that many innings in his life, mm-hmm. he's a whiner. And, like, you know, pitchers are. 
pitchers are just crybabies. That's just what they are. They are crybabies. They are the Madonnas of baseball. Mm -hmm. And when you are just so open about it, that's that's a bad sign. And it's like only, we know it's they, only been one good year too. Yeah, like Mason Miller, we found out is a prima donna, mm -hmm. but we only found out that because something leaked. He hurt himself, and then the team was like, "No, he 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 was being a bitch." Mm -hmm. We would never have found that out otherwise. Mm -hmm. He's just you know he can scream and cry in the locker room, but then we never found out. Yeah, and I assume all pitchers are like this. Mm -hmm. But Garrett was like open to it in the media. To the media. Yeah, he cried to the media about it. Mm -hmm. Like, no, yeah. I don't like that. And you think that like Red Sox. Because they're one of the teams that are apparently talking about him. Mm. Alex Cora would hate him. Probably. And I know that. Yeah, he probably would. Alex Cora would be over that so fast. Like, what do you mean? You are a major league pitcher, starting pitcher. If you want to try to be that, that means you're going to put a lot of innings on that arm, son. Get out there. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. So from one prima donna to another, the Patriots have <laughs> won a game again as they beat the Bears 16-3. to uh, I mean, 19 to three. I'm sorry. 19 to three. You almost had 20 points. Yeah. Um, I feel like this has been the growing theme whenever the Pats win a game. They were like, good for the Pats. I don't really care, though. It doesn't tell me anything about them. And we talk about the opponent. It's a damning. It's, this, it's uh, the same thing again with the Bears. Like, I don't. We're in New England. We got to talk about the Patriots a little bit here. I mean, Drake May. There's, there's a lot there. Kid looks pretty good. Now, I didn't ask him to do a ton against the Bears, but they shouldn't because the Bears are a really good defense. Um, <clears throat> but when you have Caleb and Drake play each other, this is why we can blame the Bears all we want, and I will get into them in a second. But it, Drake Bay isn't dealing with a great coaching staff. Nobody no. thinks Gerard Mayo and Alex Van Pelt are any good. No. <laughs> His offensive line is also a train wreck. He doesn't have the guys to throw to that Caleb does. Yeah. And yet... I think he, that's the worst one. And he looks good. Yeah. Functional. Yes, he do. It looks like there's something there. Caleb, over the last two weeks, can't complete 50... is struggling to complete 50% of his passes. He was 16 of 30 for 124. He's... And we can talk about scheme. We can talk about this. We can talk about that. When DJ Moore is running in just a little eight yard out and you're skipping the ball on the ground, five mm -hmm. yards in front of him. Yeah. Like, I, I'm i not really blaming Shade Waldron for that one. You're all over the place, bud. So they have a massive problem on their hands, and I never want to rag on rookie quarterbacks, and I'll usually go it's the coaching staff over the quarterback, and they deserve a lot of blame. But when you're this inaccurate, like, that's not – we're seeing it with AR – that's not something that's very fixable. I'm not saying it can't be fixed eventually, but it's hard to blame the coaching staff for that. Oh, I can't blame the coaching staff for him skipping balls <laughs> to to wide open receivers. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I can blame the team for putting him in the situation a little bit. Oh, yes. Because I, the line I, is like, yeah, we can compare lines, Patriots mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, Bears, because they're both bottom mm. but the bears are the bottom bottom with mm -hmm. that. that's why with the 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 weapons thing i think that's where it's most damning for caleb compared to drake may drake may has nobody no he has ramondre stevenson mm -hmm. who is a running running back yeah he's he, not even a pass catcher he can but he's that's not that's like not that. his game we have antonio gibson for that mm -hmm. and we don't use him caleb william has keenan allen dj moore DeAndre Swift, who's a great catching back. Cole Komet, who's a, actually a really good tight end. Um, they drafted Roma Dunze, who's been quiet behind Allen and Moore. But the one game he had to show off, he very much did. So he's, it's not like he's not talented. Roma Dunze is talented. It's just the line. Mm -hmm. At least in terms of, I well, I mean, on field, making it function. Okay, we can so, talk about the coaching and but, stuff like that. You know, it, and, and it everyone, looks, everyone, everyone it looks so messy it does but Even i only has a chance to i it does but i also think caleb makes it worse yes i think caleb is completely unable to play from the pocket and listen this is the stuff that people said coming out of college this is what i said he runs around too much and it's interesting that i mean if he had done it in the sec at least i would have been like well you know he runs around he can't do it as much as he does it in college 
but at least he's doing the SEC, so I know his athleticism is playing a bit more because he's playing SEC guys. Most of them are going to be in the NFL. When it's in the Pac-12, like, I got to just be like, bro, I I don't know if this is going to translate because it's the freaking Pac-12. And he's it hasn't translated as much he's not able to do it as much and yet he's completely unable to play from the pocket he looks incapable of playing from the pocket and that's a massive problem like there's not many quarterbacks who have made successful careers out of not being able to play from the pocket russell wilson is about the only one i can really think of lamar was able to get away with it for a little while he has gotten so much better at being able he can play from within the pocket right now he can still be a little inconsistent on the throwing, but he can play from the pocket now. Uh, I mean, Jalen Hurts was another one when he first mm-hmm. took the reins as QB. One of his biggest problems was just randomly <laughs> breaking pocket. For no just, reason. Yeah. For no reason. Yeah. Like he would, I don't know, he'd feel pressure that wasn't there and just run around. And the other and thing is, it reminds me of that. You know, when people rag on the coaching staff and rag on Walt, you got to get. You got to give him some more layups. You got to give him, well, how do you know they're not giving him some layups and he's just breaking the play and exiting the pocket mm-hmm. and not seeing it yeah. or not pulling the trigger? Like or, having, having Swift there as a yeah. easy out and like he's Caleb, just and running he's just, away. He's just running away. Yeah. So this is, I mean, there's a lot of problems here, man. And <laughs> it's getting worse and worse because DJ Moore clearly hates him. Like it's, <laughs> it's very obvious he hates him. And... DJ Moore is a guy who's been productive in this league with many a bad quarterbacks. Like, we can't question. And he's never been a problem either. But he hates playing with Caleb. There's a story that the players on the offense went to Eberflus to get Waldron fired after the game and also asked them to bench Caleb Williams for Tyson Badgen, which I have never heard that before in my life. I've never heard the team this this short into a season for a guy who was picked number one overall to go to the coaching staff and be like, can you please bench this guy? Which makes me think that not only do they not believe in him as a player, which is already a massive problem, they probably don't love him as a guy. Not even saying they dislike him, other than DJ Moore. He, <laughs> he freaking hates him. But, like, I don't know if they even like him as a guy. Uh, which I mean, then gets into the stuff that we talked about coming into the draft, which is, you know, the, the jumping up into the stands, crying after a loss, which wouldn't have been as bad except but last year then you made fun of Max Duggar on a, in a press conference for crying after losing to Georgia. So it's like, all right, well, you're full of shit. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. There's the, the painting the nails, FU Utah, the – asking for ownership of a franchise like i think very of, prima donna stuff well i think one of the biggest things like from a player's perspective oh we texted remember he texted the punter i was gonna say that he texted the, okay like that that f- from a player's perspective is like okay i like your confidence in our team i guess but like you have not played a snap <coughs> you do not know under, understand what it's going to be like looking down center and that defense is staring back at you like you don't get it and they and they punch so much. Oh yeah. Like that very quickly. A line like that, like you know, some guys would be like, "All right, sure." Like I like your confidence. And then uh, very quickly be like, "Okay, you are holding us back, and you are making us punt a lot." <laughs> yeah. Like that that will very quickly in the mind of a player be like, "Okay, you're just talk. You're all talk here, kid. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen anything, and I haven't seen anything. No. Other than when he went." wild on the Panthers when they were at their worst. And I think he probably went wild against one other team. I forget who. But it was someone almost equally as bad. Um, oh, the Jags. So he went crazy on the Jags, too. But again, <laughs> their defense is awful. This is also kind of when they were at their worst. And Carolina, for sure, that was when they were at their worst. Carolina's righted the ship a little bit. But... Uh, they scored three points against the Patriots. I mean, that is yeah. damning. They scored well, nine the week before against Arizona. You uh, gave and, up nine In that game, Caleb Patriots. Williams was 22 of 41 for 217. Yeah, I know you said nine sacks. Matt Hasselbeck, though, was on Cowherd's show on Monday after that game, and he 
And these guys like to be nicer to the young quarterbacks. And Matt went, dude, Colin, 80% of these sacks are on Caleb. That's a lot coming from a former quarterback. <laughs> I mean, you, you gave up nine sacks to a team that had 16 sacks in their first was it nine games. Yeah. Like you, that's, I know that's with over a third of their sacks. I know, I know. <laughs> and I, I, again, I, I don't know if I've heard anything before. I don't know if I've ever heard this before that this, this short into a season for a rookie quarterback that just got drafted, that the offensive players go to the coaching staff and go, please bench him. I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah, I've heard I, it later on in somebody's career, but. Yeah, I don't, that's not really. Uh, you know, that doesn't happen much. No. So. I can't actually think of another time I remember just off the top where a team was like, bench this guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing with this guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, a quarterback? I, I, I'm sure it's happened. I just can't think of when. I mean, but if it uh, has, it, you know, it stays but quiet. I've certainly, I've certainly never heard it done to a first round overall pick this short into a season. And by the way, when we're talking about the other stuff, right, the texting, the punter, they're all that, you know, all off season <clears throat> and training camp, people are talking to Jaden Daniels, they're talking to Dan Quinn and Cliff are talking how great he is. And then they ask Jaden stuff and they're like, oh, trying to compare him to Lamar. And Jaden's like, calm down. And then they call him a star quarterback. Jaden goes, I'm not a star quarterback yet. Like that's the way that you're supposed to handle this stuff. That's what we want to see. Sure. And Again, if you want to be a prima donna and a little bit immature as a wide receiver or a corner or a running back, like, I can get over it a little bit. Just don't, you know, don't get arrested off the field. Just, <laughs> you know, other than that, I can deal with that kind of stuff. But it's different as quarterback. It, it really is. Especially since chances are you're not going to be that good right away. Like, listen, if you're a super talented wide receiver, you're going to be good right away. Same as a running back. Quarterback, you're not. Yeah. You're I mean, not. you also, you are, I mean, all the great quarterbacks of our era, mm -hmm. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Mahomes now, Joe Burrow, uh, name a prima donna quarterback that had success in any form. I mean, Kyler's getting there. Well, now that he's cleaning up his act, he's being successful. Rodgers had a lot. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? He's gotten but worse. But he's an outlier. He's gotten worse with age. Well, yeah. In some of his best years when he was a younger man. Exactly. Now, I know he kind of came out with a little <clears throat> bit of an, a reputation, mm -hmm. but it was never so bad that it was n national news mm -hmm. as it has become the last few years. I know, I know. Um, the final thing here with the Bears is you can go ahead and fire Shane Waldron, and he probably deserved to be fired. Matt Eberflus is a dead coach walking. Um, but this situation is not going to get better because they have a clown as their president who they brought in because they're trying to build a new stadium and he's supposed to be the head of that and sort of the business stuff. But this is the former disgraced Big Ten owner who tried to cancel football during COVID so prematurely and then tried to strong arm the other conferences into doing it. The SEC laughed in his face. The Pac-12 to their own demise sort of went along with it and that was sort of the final nail on the coffin of the Pac-12 and eventually he was forced out of that job and so for some reason the Bears thought this is the guy to hire and this is an individual who has shown that he's not going to stay in his lane he's power hungry and it's already been reported that he was the one who wanted to keep Eberflus that's why Matt kept his job and it's been reported that Waldron and Ryan Poles have to go to Kevin Warren for stuff, which why is an individual like Kevin Warren making football decisions? Why does he have any say in football decisions? Other than maybe if you wanted to pay a high price for one particular player, simply because he's in charge of the finances, maybe I understand why he would have input after that. But apart from that, there's no reason Kevin Warren should have no business in this conversation. But that's not who Kevin is. Kevin's a guy who wants to have control over everything and will refuse to stay in his lane. So as long as this clown is running the Bears, this is not going to get better. That, that made me actually think of something that's going on with the Patriots right now. Oh, yeah? Well, have you heard about, like, the Crafts mm -hmm. are asking around 
for be basically to be the the offensive guy next year mm-hmm. for Drake May, mm-hmm. while Alex Van Pelt is still in the building, coaching Drake May, <laughs> running the offense. <laughs> Like you're trying to be the Bears now. Oh, God. You are competing with the Bears for dysfunction. Yeah, for stupidity. I don't even want to call it dysfunction. The Jets are dysfunction. The Bears are just dumb. Um, but yeah, this situation is not going to be better because Kevin's not going to make the right decisions, and Kevin's not going to stay out of no stay. Kevin's not going to stay in his lane. And what head coach is going to want to take this job mm. when I have to answer to a clown like that who has no business making football decisions? No one's going to, like, you're not going to get a weak candidates. They don't want this job. It was Your GM's probably dead, too. It's, it was heavily rumored of Ben Johnson. Mm-hmm. He's, like, really looking at the, the Bears job. He's not taking this job. Well, I assumed a lot of that reason was because Caleb. they were making the moves of Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and mm-hmm. going to draft Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in theory, with the most guaranteed prospect the NFL has ever seen, why would an offensive guru not want to maybe mm-hmm. have that slam dunk of a job? Mm-hmm. Nah. I mean, I, I, I did in the back of my head be like, would he do that to the, to the Lions? Would yeah. he go in division? Mm-hmm. But I, I do understand, at least going into the season, the optics look damn good from an offensive mm-hmm. perspective. Yes. Now I'm just like, come to the Patriots. <laughs> do this for Drake May. I know, right? Well, I mean, listen, if you watch that game, there's not a soul who could watch that game and try to lie to themselves that Drake May didn't look like a way yeah. better, yeah, way better player than and we, Caleb. There's things we have about Drake May, like the feet, yes. the feet stuff. Now, those are all more easy to correct than accuracy. Well, it's also like we see it. It's like, oh, oh I saw it right there. We see it a couple times, mm-hmm. maybe once a game, and then it'll go away. Mm-hmm. It's not a like, oh, Drake, every play, every drive, you're, you keep getting into this. No, it's like, oh, I saw it there. Yeah, yeah. I saw it right there. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a couple drives go by. Oh, there it was again. Yeah. But it's not constant. S- yeah. Yeah. No, I know. And it's just easier and to correct than accuracy. And we're seeing improvement from it. Yes. I have not seen any improvement from Caleb on most things. If anything, I'm seeing him get worse. Um, but yeah, again, as long as uh, Kevin Warren is making decisions on football stuff, this is not going to change. He's a clown. Um, he failed upwards. Kevin Warren, man. <laughs> and no one's going to... Again, why would anyone with options take this job? You wouldn't do it. Polls whiffed in the draft, too. You already had DJ Moore. You already had Cole Komet. And you already had Keaton Allen. Why did you need another wide receiver? You know what all the great organizations did? You know what Jim Harbaugh did, even though they kind of needed a wide receiver? No, I'm going to get a generational left tackle. Who's going to be my left tackle for a decade. And it's okay because I have a star quarterback, and I'll coach up the defense. We'll protect him, and we'll get it done with Ladd McConkey and Quinton Johnson and we'll just run the hell out of the ball. And that's working just well, and they're going to make the playoffs today. Don't forget Joshua Palmer. Yeah, and the Bears are like, <laughs> no, no. Uh, we got three great pass catchers. Two of them were paying a lot of money. Let's get a fourth. Forget about protecting the quarterback. They who already on. we have questions about if how comfortable he is in the pocket. They took a flight together. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's the other thing. Let's get let, let's make Caleb, who hasn't played a snap in the NFL, make decisions on our franchise. That's 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 the way to do business. Yeah, yeah. You hire the intern and you you ask him what. Uh, yeah. You ask him about the stocks of your business. <laughs> you know what should we do in this situation? Yeah, that's how it works. Like they're a freaking mess. Um, last topic here before we're gonna take a quick break. Let's talk to Cardinals. I mean, they are humming right now are they technically in first place in that division right now i think they might I, be i don't believe that uh, are let you me, sure about that let me look uh, let me know let me know and i feel good on this because i feel like we identified this early on last year uh yeah they even are. when kyler came even before kyler came back we we're like you know they're in a lot of these games where they shouldn't be i wonder if this john gannon guy is pretty damn good and we continue this and then kyler came back and they really actually pulled off some big upsets at the end of the year and they didn't hit the ground running right away this year, but they have gotten going. And I know it's been two bad teams, but they did what good teams should do to teams like that. They've throttled them. Th- throttled them. They, they destroyed the Jets. Destroyed them. And we already noted, destroyed the Bears the week before. 
And we know this division is a bit of a mess right now. The Niners are odd. The Rams got off to a terrible start. And Seattle is led by a quarterback who, as I said last week, Seattle's jumped the shark on that. So I I think this team is uh, well positioned. I mean, you could look up last three games of the season. Maybe they have the Niners, one of them, and there's a chance they could win this division. I'm not going to bet on it. But I definitely think they're going to be a playoff team. And Kyler is, you know, and I feel good about this because when they gave Kyler the contract, I was one of the few people out here defending it. And guys, like, people mature at a different rate. What? You didn't like the contract. I don't remember you defending it. Oh, it's it's on the Instagram. It wasn't like strident banging the table like I would have done the same thing. (laughs) It was like, I get it. Um. But he was just so talented that it made sense. It was like, he's not where we want to be maturity-wise, but but we can get there. And like Aaron, it was like, he's talented enough that he's winning and he's productive. And he maintained being productive through all the drama. And again, like, you know, the NFL is, this is different. We don't usually ask 21, 22, and 23-year-olds to have as much responsibility as these quarterbacks have. And sometimes, you know, guys aren't, emotionally ready for it. I feel like Kyler in the last year and a half has grown up a lot. So, I mean, I, I, I've seen him mature a little bit. I was still, especially with them, when they first announced the contract, it's like they had a clause in there about doing homework. I know. And like, you know, people were coming up with the stats of, like, how he played on Call of Duty, like, double XP weekends and – uh, just non-regular weekends, and, like, there was actually a clear discrepancy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, Call of Duty came out recently, though, and he's 2-0 and oh in, po- in Ballin. <laughs> yes. Actually, he turned that into a sponsorship. So he's <laughs> sponsored by a- Activision. I don't know. Whatever. I Yeah, I've seen maturity. I know he's very talented. He's still small. Mm-hmm. I know. Just physically. I am still hesitant to call this a good team. You, you know... Obviously, the early in the early season games, they don't matter as much because like people still finding themselves, finding who they are. Like so, when they lo- you lost to the Bills and then you beat the Rams big. Like I don't care about those games too much, but you know you lost to the Lions. I think the Lions are better than you, so you should have lost that game. But it was a close game, mm-hmm. close seven point game, mm-hmm. one score game. You got smashed by the Commanders, who I'll talk about later. Why they're frauds. Um, you did beat the Niners on the road. It was by one point, but you did it. And that's like, it, it, it's, you don't have to, if, when you face them again, it's going to be in your territory. Like that, that's, that's big. That's actually, that's probably the, the big one. You got smashed by the Packers. You beat the the Chargers. That's another team where I'm like, I don't, what are you? You beat the Dolphins by one. You smash the Bears. You smash the Jets. You are better than the bad teams. I, I'm still hesitant to call this a good team. It's okay. a decent team. You know, you got, I mean, it's a lot of Kyler Murray. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to make noise in the playoffs. Connor. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, uh, Trey McBride's good. Mm-hmm. I think he's got <sighs> the defense playing pretty well, even though we don't really know anyone on it. I think, I think the coaching is good. I think Jonathan Gannon is a good coach. I think we said it last year, too. And it's continued into this year. He's just getting the most out of this roster. Sure. I mean, other than Buda Baker, I mean, I don't think they have a single star on defense. And he's old. He is old. So, I don't know, man. Look around the league right now. They cycle through coaches so much. The coaching in this league is pretty bad. Oh, it is. So, if you're, if you're just the good. quarterback play is terrible. If, if you're just good. Like really good, buttoned I, up. You were good enough to beat a lot of teams on your schedule, even if your roster's not as good. But I'm not even gonna. I, I, I'm still hesitant to call them good. They're just not. No, I said the co- if your coaching's good. Oh, if the coaching's good. Yes, that's what I, I said. guess. Okay, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, all right, you're, you're clearly better than the bad teams. You beat the bad teams. It's like, all right, you beat the 49ers, but like we, what are the 49ers? Mm. Like the the whole NFC West is mediocre. Oh, it is. 100 percent like they all have had their moment of like oh maybe the rams are gonna take oh okay no they didn't want it <laughs> oh the seahawks look at the, oh okay no never mind all right well Whatever. they fell off a cliff yeah like they all have looked like okay maybe they're gonna be the ones to take this division 
And then the second they have it, the second they're like sitting in first place, like, oh, it's in our hands now, they, they fall off. They lose at home to the Dolphins. <laughs> so, like, and actually, who does the Cardinals face? The Seahawks. Mm-hmm. So, like, all right, this is the chance for the Seahawks to right the ship and for the Cardinals to continue just this NFC at West trend. I Because it, it's the Seahawks, it's the Vikings, it's the Seahawks again. Like, that's an emotional three weeks. That is. It is. I mean, it, it then you know it's then the Patriots at home after, so like you get a break after, but like, who knows what we're gonna see from the Patriots in those couple weeks from now? I'm pretty confident that they're not flying out to That's, Arizona and no, 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 no. <laughs> but will Drake May have taken another step? Will the will Barmore be back because he's supposed to practice today actually, mm-hmm. um, and you know patch up that defense a little bit more. Mm. You know, you come out of those three weeks where you're a little banged up, you're a little like licking your wounds, you're a little emotional. You're like, okay, it's the Patriots. We can just we don't have to we don't have to care that much. We'll mm-hmm. focus on the Panthers next week, and then you're only scored three points. It's the fourth quarter, and you've given up nine sacks. Uh, I I just I don't see it. I, I don't I I think they'll win. They'll win pretty comfortably. <laughs> I just think they'll win. I, I don't think the Pats are flying out to Arizona. That's not what I'm saying. You know, if they if they had to come here to New England. Maybe after an emotional game before, you have to fly all the way here. The weather is bad. Maybe I'd, I'd buy into this, but uh, yeah, I, I think they'll they'll handle the, the Pats in that matchup. I mean, and uh, Vikings, Sam Darnold is officially on pumpkin watch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was bad. Just start, he just needs to just get back to throwing it to just Justin Jefferson. <laughs> just that guy. Which, yeah, I mean... You know, O'Connell fooled us. He was able to fool us for a little while. Yeah, but did, but Sam me. Darnold won out in the end. He didn't fool me. And now, listen, I want to say officially. You say, you know, we, Kevin can, can get him back on the tracks. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I just said he's on pumpkin watch. <laughs> he's had a bad two weeks. Halloween's over. Had a bad two weeks. Hall- I thought that's when he would have been seeing the ghosts. So now Halloween's over. Okay. The ghosts are gone. All right, maybe. Kevin All right. can get him back, on, back right. in back in the <laughs> lane. Touche. <laughs> we'll see. All right. With that, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk the Cowboys collapse. I'll talk a little LSU, um, Brian Kelly, and we'll talk Debo choking the long snapper, and then we'll give you that uh, Washington Eagles preview. My take on that is going to be very different than what you think. Um, so stick with us, guys. And we are back. Jesse, hey. I'm going to need you to lock in right here. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, don't talk to me like that. You know who's not locked in? Uh Moody. The Dallas Cowboys are not locked in, oh. that's for sure. Sure. And, uh, I mean, they are <laughs> just a train wreck. And this is one of my favorite bets of the year was their under. Um, but it's far worse than even I could have imagined. And it's not all their fault. They got injured, though that was part of the reason why I was saying bet the under, because there's only, like, four good players on this roster. And they are very good, like, really, really good. But when you only have four guys who are special – you know, one of them gets hurt, and all of a sudden, you're not a good team anymore. Are you considering one of those four the kicker? Yes, I am. Okay. Brandon Aubrey's <laughs> the best that it, that it, that because he that is it. great. Yeah, and then you got C.D. Lamb, and you got Micah Parsons, and you got Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott. I mean, he's good. I thought you were gonna say Diggs. Is he good? I mean, I'm the tr- the <laughs> one who trashes Diggs, and you, you you say he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I don't think, I think he's, he's special. I mean. These are offensive defensive positions, but how about, I think how about Diggs this? is more talented. How, how about this? How about Prescott? That? How about this? Can I can I count Diggs and Bland as one person and say, therefore they have five good players? Dowdle. What? Dowdle. No. <laughs> and I'm the one who traded for him fantasy, but no. Um, hey, Jake Ferguson is a serviceable tight end. Serviceable, <laughs> not good. Serviceable. They're very different things. Anyway, though, that's not the point. First off, Micah comments. Mike is making comments like, I don't care about Mike McCarthy, which, first off, Parsons says dumb things anyway, so you do have to take it that it is Micah Parsons. Remember the foot thing? Yes, I remember that. But this still goes into the sense of, like, you let Mike McCarthy stay the head coach, even though we all thought you were going to fire him, but you also didn't extend his contract. So you clearly said, this guy's kind of a dead coach walking. Which, as we mentioned coming into the year, like, if we all know that, if you're just a lame duck head coach, well, then you don't really have a lot of power in the building anymore. And that's a major problem. Like, your boss needs to have some power in any business. 
at all. But Jerry, and we all just think that you're going to get fired. Well, I'm not going to freaking listen to you. Jerry doesn't seem to think he's the problem. Jerry thinks, I don't know what Jerry thinks, but I've, Jerry kind of ripped him a couple of weeks ago. Jerry's, Jerry is, uh, Jerry's having a rough time these days. J Jerry's going off in interviews. I think the Jerry's... Sun one was great. Yeah. That was, <laughs> wow, that's one of the best audios of him ever. You all know where the sun is. Just rip down the stadium. Um, but this team sucks. They are as bad as it gets. I will say now that Dak getting hurt and being out for the year was probably the best case scenario for them. Because at this point, you might as well just lose a bunch and have the best picks that you possibly can. Um, now, if Jerry's making the decisions, which Jerry has been, you're probably not going to make the right ones because apart from Micah Parsons and CeeDee Lamb, they've kind of whiffed on all their other picks. And that's why their roster is so so top-loaded because they've done nothing but whiff in the second, third, fourth, and fifth rounds for the last three to four years. So this team is awful. This team is a joke. Um, and if you told me they only won one or two more football games the rest of the year, I would completely believe it. I kind of think Jerry's playing some 4D chess here, though. Okay. A little bit. All right, why? Everyone was like, well, Mike McCarthy's getting fired last year. Mm -hmm. He's getting fired. Like you can't, you can't play that playoff game like you just did. And think he's not going to get fired by Jerry Jones, mm -hmm. and yet he's still here. Mm. I think he wants Bill Belichick. Yeah, but at this point, why? If you're Bill, why would you take this job? Because I think Jerry will step down as GM. I don't think so. Now, Jerry what has, about Jerry at 80-something years old? 80-year-old men don't, especially 80-year-old, highly successful men, don't usually change their opinions or ways. He's got no passion for being a GM right now. He, I mean, it's surely a headache, but... He, he last second, C.D. Lamb gave him a contract. He, again, on the offseason, I think he knew. Because, like, why did you keep McCarthy this offseason? Because he's know. a yes man? I don't know. I, 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 I don't have an that. answer for you. Unless he, unless maybe he was playing 4D chess. Maybe he knew the team wasn't going to be good. He didn't want to hire someone because he wanted Bill. He knew Bill wasn't going to do it this last offseason. So he's like, I'm going to keep McCarthy one more year, knowing damn well he will do something fireable. Mm -hmm. And I will have. Because if, if he fired McCarthy and he, Bill's like, I'm not really. Like, you know, he, he had a couple interviews, mostly just with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And other than that, he didn't really want to call or even talk to anybody. So if Jerry knew that, well, I'm not going to fire McCarthy to hire a guy for one year. Mm -hmm. That looks terrible. Um, and, and at that point, Bill would just be like, no, like, I'm not going to get the same fit as that guy. Oh, no, Bill, no. Like, it was, it was a placeholder for you. Like, come on. Anyway, it, I, think, I think it's some 4D chess. Like, I'm, I'm not that passionate about the GM role anymore. Obviously, Jerry will still be like, this is my money. I'm in the room, like I'm in I'm in the talks. But Bill, I'll be your number two. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't think Jerry is capable of doing that. But I also think at this I point, it, I don't think if, you're, if wrong, you're Bill. Why I the think hell would you want this job? The Washington's on the come up. The Eagles still aren't going anywhere, despite what we think of Sirianni. They pay great money for both coordinators, and the roster is still extremely talented. You, like this roster sucks. <laughs> Outside of seeding Lamb. They have the worst wide receiving core maybe in the NFL. There's well, nobody else here. The running back room is easily the worst. The <laughs> offensive line is getting old. The defense has three special players on it. That's it. The minute Micah went down, oh. their defense sucked. You know, Bill is itching to, to coach a guy like Micah Parsons. I know, but... And Dak, by the way, hasn't... What is this? Dak's second major surgery in three years? And he's expensive. The Dak contract is... A problem. The Probably the biggest... Um, turn off. Well, they're just the biggest, uh, I think, uh, reason why I'm wrong mm -hmm. about him wanting Bill. Because a move like that tells me you're not looking for Bill. Well, actually, we would tell me you would, because I don't think I'd really potentially really want Bill to work with a young quarterback at this rate. I think I'd rather he have an established veteran who he doesn't have to teach too much. Uh, and I just want him to, to yeah. coach my defense and button, I don't up, think button up the culture and, you know, all that kind of stuff maybe if it was a different guy and not Dak Prescott. <laughs> if it was Aaron Rodgers 
or a much more ta- just a much more talented QB. I, no, I get that, but because of Dak's but talents. you can do a lot worse than Dak. Sure, I you guess. can. You can. But but the bigger problem now with Dak isn't about the player as far as when he's on the field. Now it's about he's expensive and we're we're sitting here having our second major surgery I think in th- in three or four years on your lower body again. Too. Yeah. So that's a problem. Yeah, but like he's got C.D. Lamb. Mm-hmm. Bill does not have to worry about finding a wide receiver. Well, he does because they need find, more than he CD. can find smaller ones. He can find the small ones. All right, he's got the one. All right, we are Bill, that's the so thing. diametrically opposed that on is, this one. That is the thing Bill cannot find. He's got it. I, Boom. I, 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 you say the running back room sucks. That's fine. He'll get an undrafted rando. Oh that no, works. You, that's one of the fastest and, things you can fix. And Zeke's in the room, that. and he loves Zeke Elliott. Yeah, Zeke's not going to be there much longer. Zeke Elliott. He's that, not going to be there much if longer. If Bill has anything to say, Zeke will be the guy. It'll run through Zeke. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy that at all. Any of this. I don't think Bill has any interest in this job. Also, Bill loves and history, I think this, football history. I, I know he does, but this team is. Headed down a one-way track to disaster over the next three years until Bill because changes they used the to, course of history. Because they used to have two free wins in the division every year that would get them four of their wins, and the layups are no longer there. The Giants still Except exist. Except the Giants still suck. The Giants still exist. That's that, still two free. That wins. is true, but they'll probably draft a quarterback this year. And That's, if it's Shador, then you know. Is San- if they're bad enough to get Shador. Uh, will, will the Sanders family allow that? That is a question <laughs> that is worth talking about. Though I feel like maybe if Dable's still there, maybe he would. Really? I think so. You think, well, one, do you think Dable will still be there? Yes. Oh. At this rate, I do. Okay. I mean, if he's not, the owner's kind of an idiot. Not because Brian's so amazing, but I do think Brian is good. But it's also like the owner's got to... Like you're the one who who paid Jones this contract. I guess, like, I guess. like this is an on prime. Sure. Um, but yeah, this is. I think this this to this franchise is headed towards about a three year disaster right now. They've whiffed on pick after pick after the last three years. You are paying a quarterback who is increasingly getting older and more injury prone. You have one great wide receiver who you already now pay big money to. Like everyone's expensive. Yeah. Like, you need some people who can perform who aren't getting paid big money. Every single person on this team who performs is getting paid big money. That's that's a freaking problem. Well, that's why you need a guy like Bill who can just find these randos. I mean, listen, I'm not saying that Bill rock. wouldn't be a good hire. I'm saying that I don't think Bill would be have any interest in the job. Texas. Anyway, from, Texas. <clears throat> from the Cowboys, let's go to LSU. Um, this is painful. Uh, they get hammered by Alabama. I don't even want to say the score. Um, and Brian Kelly, listen, I think Kelly could have lost this game. I actually think this game meant more for DeBoer if he had lost it. But uh, it, it, he couldn't lose like that. And, you know, it, it's at home. You're in Baton Rouge. Uh, you know, DeBoer's already lost two games on the season. And they brought you here to get this program back to what it needs to be, what it always has been when they've had the right coach, which is a perennial national championship contender. Now, he's not going to get fired yet, and that's not just because of the buyout. One of the biggest reasons is right now on the next recruiting class, LSU ranks fourth in the entire country, including bringing in the best quarterback prospect in the class in Bryce Underwood, and I don't think that the LSU brass wants to risk upsetting what would be an absolutely dynamite recruiting class by firing the head coach. And I also don't know what's even out there available for you to hire this coaching cycle. Um, so, yeah. But it was pretty unacceptable the way that went down. And Brian Kelly is officially on the hot seat. Though, again, I do not think he will be getting fired after the end of this year. Partly in due, mostly in due, because this recruiting class coming in is just too too valuable for them to want to risk uh, blowing it up at all. Um, I know you have no comments on this, so it was just a pretty quick segment. College football to, sucks. To talk about. Uh, but yeah. Uh, with that, let's talk about Debo Samuel. 
choking the long snapper. Jesse, I need you to lock back in here for a second. <laughs> and I'm actually going to defend Debo. I'm going to defend Debo because Debo has been one of the anchors of this team. He's carried them at times in some games. Not as much this year, but in the past he has. Um, he's one of the leaders on this team. And he's one of the engines that make this go. And yet consistently every year, and I feel like even this year it's gotten worse, the special teams is an embarrassment on this team and continually screws up their chances to win games while the rest of these guys are playing their ass off and working hard. And Kyle defended Debo. Jake Moody defended Debo. And both of them said the exact same thing, and Debo said the same thing. And it wasn't a long exchange if you went and watched from what Debo actually said to Jake Moody. And he basically just went by him and said, lock in, dude. Get it together. <laughs> We've all said that to people before. Not lock in. We've usually said, you know, bro, yeah, get it together. Focus, whatever it is. I think Devo's well within his rights for that. And then the long snapper just comes flying off the handle from the top rope. Just don't talk to him like that. Defending the kicker as if Debo went on a five-minute tirade telling him what a piece of shit human being he was. Um, I thought the long snapper was out of line. Uh, you know, if Debo wants to choke slam him, I, I don't have much problem with that. This is it's not a daycare, man. This is... This is a different type of operation. It's not an insurance company like Tom Brady and Bill O'Brien and Josh McDaniels, but getting screaming matches. Like this is it's a different kind of industry. It's a bunch of alpha males. You know, motions get tense on the sideline sometime. It wasn't that crazy. I have a problem if you start going to the media and start making personal and make every fight last forever. That's what they do in the NBA. Um, uh -huh because they're passive aggressive like that. But I'm a, I'm fully on Debo's side here. And the coaching staff was and Jake Moody was. So I don't know what more there is to say, but it's been a it's been a weird year for the Niners and they find themselves on the outside looking in right now. And I still think they'll be in the playoffs. I don't know if it'll be the division or a wild card, but this is not the same team that it's been. The walk in line is hilarious. I know. Especially if that's like that's that's the quote. Mm -hmm. Lock in, bro. And, and like, all right, if that's all he said, that's all truly Debo said. Okay, that's not bad. What I still will blame Debo for is once the long snapper comes in and defends his kicker from the top rope, <laughs> which like from I assume the kicker or the long snapper did not hear the comment and just saw Debo loudly talking to him. I guess after he missed the kick, yeah, yeah, and is like, whoa. Get out of my kicker's face. Especially like kickers. I, I'm going to compare them to pitchers, not the fact that they're Madonnas. No, it's just different. It's a, it's a very it's different. mental yes. game, kicking and pitching. So like, yeah, you know what? Lock in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good thing to tell them. Um, but, but with, you know, the long snapper, I'm sure he's just in there defending his kicker. Like, bro, start. Like, you think that's going to help him? Like yelling at his face? Not not understanding probably what was actually being said, mm. and then I'm still gonna get on Diva for like, bro. Yeah, you don't choke the the kicker or the long snapper. Like, don't do that. Like, you're, they're like you're sure this is uh, a high intensity sport with a bunch of big guys full of testosterone. I'm sure they. I, I know they yell at each other a lot. Yeah, I watched Tom Brady. Like he yells all the time for no reason. He just gets upset and yells. Like, they could be winning by a, a mile. He'll overthrow Julian Edelman because Julian slightly ran the wrong route, and Julian's going to get crucified for that. Mm. That's just how it always was. I, you, you don't often see the hands. It's, it's not even like pushing and shoving. You, you tried to choke. You tried to choke him. <laughs> like, like you're Darth Vader at the, the beginning of episode four, like holding up the guy. Like... Like, no, no, yeah. Debo. That's fine. You told him to lock in. And uh, Jake, if Jake Moody defended him, the team defended him. Like, listen, it was, why, why, are you, why are you trying to fight the long snapper? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he came in yelling too much, like, don't talk to him like that, blah, 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 blah. That's awesome. And, just and like, Debo's bro, like, whoa, bro. Consistently, your unit that you are a part of is a clown show joke of an operation 
costing this team but the, well, games. Hold, you have no reason to talk. Hold on. You got to sit there and take it for a second. How many kicks did he have? Not made, but kicks. Four? I think so. Did Att- he miss two? Four field goal attempts? Yeah. At least three. Debo, that's not a winning formula. Put the ball in the end zone, and then you can start choking the long snapper. <laughs> But it's not about score just more that. touchdowns. It's not just about that game. It's about this recurring theme since Kyle has been there. I guess, and it's gotten worse. You know what else is a recurring? And by theme? the way, and by the way, Debo the causing the, drama. At the end of the day, what, what other drama has Debo? He got? is always opening his mouth about something. Yeah, oh, whatever. We he, gave him a pass for sure, Bradbury he because sure he was about the right. Bradbury. We we gave him a pass for that one because he was right, but he's still a grown man going on podcasts whining about another grown man. I guess, but I don't know. I I just am more of a Debo defender than you. But at the end of the day, you know whose fault this really is? The biker's fault. No, it's Kyle Shanahan's. <laughs> because you're either coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. And for three years now, and especially sure. the last year and a half, your special teams are a joke. And it's very obvious, and everybody knows that you don't care about it. But at some point... It's going to start costing you games, and it does. And it cost them in the Super Bowl, actually, too. And you know who does care about special teams? Bill Belichick. Andy Reid. <laughs> and Bill Belichick. And Mike Tomlin does, too. Like, Kyle, get off your play sheet. You're the head coach still, man. I feel like I'm becoming a Kyle, like, well, anti-Kyle over the last three weeks, and I'm not I, trying to come across like that. Thing. But, like, we got to be honest about some stuff. I don't, like... Your kicker missing kicks isn't – if he's just missing them, that's not on your special teams. If they're getting blocked, if, like, the snap is constantly bad, if, like, there's constant pressure on the kickers, that – Well, he was saying it to Jake because he missed the kick, but the special teams is doing all this stuff. The special teams have been giving up long returns at stupid times. They've okay, had sure, stuff kicks, like that. Had... Can, but that's not, that's not on Moody at all. I know. When you start missing kicks – That one's on Moody. The miss in the field goal was on Moody. I, 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 now, they might have brought him back from that high ankle sprain too early, which, again, uh, maybe, by the way, what is, whose fault is that? Okay, it's actually, Kyle's. how about this? Harrison Butker came back early from an injury last year, mm-hmm. and he was still just Harrison Butker, just the man. <laughs> just everything he says is facts. <laughs> like, just Harrison Butker. <laughs> uh you know what I mean? Because remember, he got injured last year. Yes, he did. Yeah. He did miss some time, but he came back and he was like, oh, he's not 100%, but he can go. And he's like, I'm still Harrison Butker. Was the injury, on, was the injury on his foot, though? I thought it was hip. All right. But, like, not on the foot. When it's your foot and you're the kicker, like, it depends. bro, that, you, you better make sure that thing's not, 100%. And, by maybe. the way, the replacement, Andrew Carlson, I don't think he missed a kick. So, it's like, we didn't need to rush Moody back yet. <laughs> buck, buck stops with Kyle. I'm completely on Debo's side. Nothing. I'm, the nothing long I'm, snappers being a but nothing I'm hearing here has, has no anything to do with to special teams and their problems. It's just Moody missed some kicks. No, but how but can the, I blame that on but Kyle? The special, special team teams? has been a problem for a year and a half now. But that's a but that's a had nothing to do with the event on Sunday. Listen, it doesn't, but it does because you know finally Debo's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting sick of the special teams just blowing our chances to win games. Either like Jake Moody misses I, the kick, I would, and Debo's just like, "Oh my God!" Or you know what? I Jake, think you don't tell figure them. Figure it out. You don't tell them lock in. You don't tell one guy to lock in. Figure it out. If you told the whole, if you went to like the special teams coordinator and be listen, like, "Dude, I, you got to get this on." Listen, when I say what I'd be like, "Yo, Debo, you know, he's a hundred percent." Like, I I tell him to do that again. Probably <laughs> not. But it's also I'm not gonna get it. On him and, and say it was a horrible Listen, thing. It, and the long snapper needs to shut his mouth. We are batting a thousand after you choke the long snapper with kicks. Please do it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> That's technically a fact. Washington and the Eagles play tonight. And I think this is a massive game. It's a very interesting game. Uh, the line sits at four now. It opened at three and a half. Um, I think this is an important game for Sirianni. I actually do not think this is an important game for Washington. I think this is extremely important for the Eagles. You don't think a division game is? Well, but they'll at least get them a second time. Um, But it's way more important for the Eagles, and I'll explain why. Now, Nick has righted the ship the last couple of weeks. 
not the greatest competition in the world. They probably should be stomping most of those teams, but they've looked better. They've figured out the better way to play with Jalen Hurts. Now, part of this is I'm not trying to give Sirianni the credit because I'm sorry. You have two of the better coordinators in this league who you pay a ton of money to to figure it out. And Vic Fangio, the longer he's had with the defense, has figured some stuff out. And Kellen Moore has figured out how to play with Hurts. So I think it's more the coordinators. But, you know, Nick's still the head coach. So we brag on them when they're not successful. So we got to give them some some props of success. Um, but this one, this is a real team. And it's a big game. And it's in division. And you got it at the perfect time. This could not be more perfectly set up for Philly. It's a short week after they played a very tough team, physical all day long, four quarters, the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got to play a hapless Cowboy team who you literally started benching people at the end of the third. And it's at home in Philly. Like, the the Eagles should win this game. And they should kind of win it a little bit comfortably. Like, I feel like they should win by a touchdown. This shouldn't come down to a field goal at the end of the game. And it's I feel like a little bit of a referendum on Sirianni if it does. Because there's no excuse of, like, you being flat in this game. Like, ever, all the stars have aligned that you are in the best position possible. And Washington is in a pretty bad position for this game. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at Washington as potential frauds here yeah i know you are i'm not going that far i just think this is a terrible spot i mean you're on the road on a short week which already by the way the thursday night games especially if you're a favorite and you're at home already heavily yeah is on their side yeah but it it just i mean there's a lot of questions with both these teams right now Mm mm-hmm uh, and it is a division game, and that can mean weird things. And to be honest, because of that, I I don't think we're going to get a lot of real answers mm. from this game because it'll be odd. It'll be I strange. Mean, I mean, I think if the Commanders win, we get kind of an answer on something. You know what? I will say that, yes. If the Commanders win, we'll get a far more definitive answer of a, what these teams are yeah. than if the Eagles won. I'll, I'll definitely agree with that. Okay. Because I mean, the Eagles – excuse me, the Commanders are 7-0. and against teams under 500, 0 and 3 against teams over 500. Mm-hmm. Now, I say potential fraud because they still play all the games they lost, they still they're good teams, they played them hard, mm-hmm. and the the bad teams that they should beat, they are beating well. Mm-hmm. So it, it's kind of similar to like the, what the Cardinals boat is. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not saying they're a bad team. You're just saying let you're not your as, record your record is not indicative of the fact that you are a tier below yes. most of these playoffs. Yes. Teams. But if you come in short week, road, and if you, especially if you beat them handily, mm-hmm. like, all right, I will be very much like commanders. Like, you are legit. You are the clear team head and shoulders above everyone else in your division. Mm-hmm. But if the Eagles win, I'll still be like, well, okay, commanders could be frauds. You took advantage of the situation, the week, the home field. Yeah. And it sounds so unfair as, as people who are critics of Sirianni that we don't want to give him credit, but I'm sorry. Like, you're supposed to be the best team in this division, and as I just mentioned, you're literally getting this game on the perfect circumstances. You're yeah. at home, short week. You played nobody on Sunday. They had to play a real opponent. Yeah. Like a very tough physical opponent at that, too. Mm-hmm. That's tough to bounce back from. So, But it's an important game. It's very important, especially, again, if the Eagles lose, uh, that is damning. That is damning, especially since the commanders, I don't think the commander's schedule is going to be that tough going forward. I'm sure Philly still is because they had a first-place schedule last year. It is not tough at all. Who, Washington's? No. I'm staring at it. Who is it? Uh, Eagles, Cowboys, Titans, Saints, Eagles, Falcons, Cowboys. Exactly. So not only... Is the position just bad that you should win this game because they've had every disadvantage, you have every advantage? If you lose, the commanders are just so set up to go on another win streak here. You're going to be in major trouble. In major trouble. Actually, I'll try to get the Eagles schedule. I'm going to go further. I'm I'm going to go this far. 
if Nick Sirianni loses this game tonight, that's a nail. That's a nail on the coffin. Because you know they're looking for every excuse they can to get rid of him. Yeah. I mean, I think it's this point. He but, is. Uh, but again, unfortunately, if they just win too much, it comes hard to. Which I think they will. Because again, when you pay the best, one of the better defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators, and you have a very talented roster, in spite of the head coach, you're going to win games. I still think, you know, come playoff time, when they meet a real team. They'll get exposed, and then that will be Sirianni their excuse. will yeah. find a way to embarrass himself and the team. I, I agree. And they'll still be taken off the hook. I know. I agree. I agree. Well, but here's the Eagles schedule to, fi- to finish. Cause commanders, L.A. against the Rams, in Baltimore, oh. home against the Panthers. Okay, there you go. Home against the Steelers, Ooh. in Washington, Cowboys, Giants. Yeah, they see. They at least end the season nice, though. They end the season but, nice. But I mean, Steelers, Ravens, Rams. Yeah, that's that's not easy. Not easy at all. Here's the other thing, though. Historically, I, I say historically, like it's been that long. But over the last <laughs> two years, and by the way, I've said this many times on the show, because as a gambler, this has been one of my locks. Washington has given the Eagles trouble over the last two years. Now, those spreads were different because Washington was a bad team then. But they have secondary problems. Washington's always been able to chuck the ball with McLaurin. Now they have an even better quarterback. So, you know, there's some there's some matchups issues that Philly needs to worry about here. But again, very few excuses why the Eagles should not win this game. And I don't want to hear about a lot of dancing or celebrating if they only win on a field goal at the end of the game to win because it shouldn't be that close. Oh, they'll be Nick Sirianni will be taunting the fans, going nuts. <laughs> Stupid. All right, we're finishing it up. Jesse. Oh boy. Darwin Award. Let's go. Drum roll, please. All right. This week's Darwin Award winner is Jack Del Rio. If you're a football fan, you might remember that name, but like not necessarily who that is. He, I believe his most recent job in the NFL was coaching with the Raiders. I believe that was. Mm-hmm. And uh, recently he was with Wisconsin. I'm actually not confident in that was Wisconsin. I think he was with Wisconsin first. Right? Okay, I think it was Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he recently just stepped down from that job because of uh, a, a little situation he found himself into. Uh, you know, it's no secret that these sports guys, they enjoy going out, partying, even the coaches. Like, they, it seems even they get caught when they go out. We, we remember that picture from, uh, who was that coach? Jacksonville a couple of years ago, famous for Florida and Ohio State. Oh, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer. He, you know, he went out and he, he can't even go out without getting caught. What did Jack Del Rio do to make him step down from Wisconsin after no one heard his name for like a year? Well, he allegedly went out and on his way home, he was just about to get home. You know, most of the crashes happen, drunk driving, within about, I think it's a half mile of your house. Really? I actually didn't know that. Yes. And, you know, he was about to get to his house. He was about to make it after allegedly a night out of drinking. He then took out a street sign, smashed through his neighbor's fence, and said, this is a great place to stop and park. And he did (laughs) on his just neighbor's lawn and went home, walked the rest of the way home, which was like, you know, one house. Still, though, he just left his car there. Like, like that's, that's, that's stupid stupid I, like how do you get that drunk how do you get there i don't know i've never been that drunk no uh, not even in college have i ever been that drunk no, but i think some... i would have done that no although i guess I, I did fall asleep in a hallway of our hostel that i worked oh. at in new orleans so i guess i've done embarrassing things things that i'm like oh god like really i let myself get there i've never crashed through my neighbor's fence and then left the car there and then it's like this is a great parking spot yeah that's like the scene in... Um, well, I was thinking of the song, actually. Oh. My Public cool. Enemy. What? By Lit. The only song they ever did that was popular. My car is in the front yard. And oh. um, okay, sleeping with my clothes. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. yeah, 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 I do yeah, that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's funny. <laughs> no, I was thinking of uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, When he yes. takes the lewds. Oh, and then God. he thinks he drives home safe. <laughs> And then he gets arrested, and then you see his car. Yes. And it's all a disaster. And then he gets the real flashback of him crashing into everything. I imagine it was like that. He, he made it home, though, and parked his car in his, in, yeah. in his driveway. Oh, oh, you're right. 
uh, Jordan Belfort actually made it into his own driveway. Yes. Jack Del Rio did not get that far. <laughs> he left it on his no. Neighbor's but he thought he yard. did. At least I hope he thought he did. Because I wonder if he didn't <laughs> think he was parking his car in his own driveway, where did he think he was leaving the car? <laughs> uh, anyway, he resigned for that. Congratulations <laughs> to Jack Del Rio. You made it home. For the real life example of my public enemy. Um, oh, my own worst enemy, not my public enemy. My own okay. worst enemy, that is. Okay. I am my own worst enemy. Sure. Yeah. I, I did. Well, Jack, you were your own worst enemy. <laughs> when, how long? This was last week, right? Yeah, this was a couple days ago. Okay. So, congratulations to Jack Del Rio for parking on his neighbor's <laughs> front yard. He took out the, the sign. He took out a fence. That has been it for Slow Your Roll this week. This one will be up on YouTube, by the way, guys, not just the podcast format. So, we'll be posting that. Um, probably the link may be on our Twitter. It'll definitely be on the Instagram page. But have a great rest of your week, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how this Commander's-Eagles game goes tonight.